Today, I'm going to relocate my battery to the trunk. So as you can see, my battery is out and I also removed the battery tray. And I was thinking about putting it back in the car. I painted it up, got rid of all the rust, but I wanna to try to get the car more balanced. And that means moving some weight to the back. And so I thought, well, let's try to do this, do this right. So I bought some stuff online to do the whole process. Let me show you. This is the stuff I bought online to do the whole extension. It cost me around $75. Uh, the main cost is essentially the wire. So you wanna get two gauge or zero gauge. I've heard that zero gauge is kind of overkill. So a two gauge is a little cheaper. I have a 15 foot power cord and a three foot negative terminal cord. This is a battery box because I wanted to put the battery in something to um, just give it a little bit of protection. And then some accessories. I have some heat shrink that I bought. That was pretty cheap. These terminal connections I'm going to use in a little bit. I'll show you that in the engine bay. Bought some grommets because I'm going to be drilling into the trunk to mount this strap. So that holds the box with the battery to the trunk. And then this is a power terminal distribution terminal thingy. Um, I'm going to be hooking up in the engine bay everything to this terminal to distribute the power to the car. And that's it. So. Let's get going. You can see, I have um, undone these screws here to hold this in, and this goes into the car. You have the wire loop. What I'm doing is I cut a hole in this with my razor because I'm going to be feeding my power cable through here into the engine bay. That's going to connect to this power terminal. And I'm also going to connect these two wires that were on the battery to this terminal. I'm gonna start off by mounting the power terminal to this threaded hole. Uh, it used to hold something, probably some bracket for the airbox, but now I'm gonna use it to mount this power terminal. So just screw it on, and then I'm going to take the cover off of this power cables here for the starter and for the fuse box. And then I'm going to cut the connector that is on there off the two cables so I can attach a new connector. razor blade here to remove some of the wire loom that's on there to expose the copper wire so I can make a good connection to my new connector. So I take some heat shrink and I'm going to basically attach these wires together. I use a big piece of heat shrink and slide it over. I attach my copper fitting to the end. I want to get both wires into the one fitting. It fits actually pretty snug, which I was happy about. And as you can see, it's fitted there. I don't have a heat gun, so I'm using a lighter to shrink the heat shrink onto the wire setup that I made. Just be careful, obviously, that this is around a gasoline engine. And then I use some electrical tape to just uh, connect the bottom of the heat shrink to the plastic tubing that came with the car just to make it nice and tidy. Now I'm inside the cabin pushing the red positive terminal cable through the hole in the firewall. And I'm pushing it through the rubber grommet so I can have it be more tucked through uh, that and keep moisture out. 
And then I will go ahead and connect it up to the power terminal that I mounted onto the shock tower with the other uh, two cables that I just routed together. I think this system is actually a really, really good setup. I just put a nut on the top so everything is secure. Okay, so I have the fuse cable and the power to the starter going to this power terminal. And then I ran my power cable for the battery through the grommet back here for the main wire loom. And then that I've connected it here as well. Tightened the bolts down and good to go. Now I need to run my cable through. I have, you can see, kind of see the red cable here. I've run it be in behind this cover here where the ECU is. And then I'm going to run the cable. I'm going to try to run it underneath this piece of cover, plastic covering trim. So you can see the wire there. It's going under this beam. And then as you can see, it's coming out from the trim up front, running its way through the wall, the wall here coming out. And that's where I'm going to position my box. I know a lot of guys will put it in the corner here, but to me in my brain, that suggests kind of poor weight distribution because what I've heard and read is you want to keep all the weight in between the shock towers back and in the front. So if you have weight hanging off the ends, it's not the greatest. So plus, I think it's dangerous to have it out near the back of the car in case you get in an accident. So I'm going to try to fit it here. I connected the negative terminal to a hole in the chassis that was already threaded. And then I start marking my holes to put the brackets down that are for uh, the strap to hold the box down. This strap came with the box that I bought. I end up not using it. But I'm working it through the holes, the brackets here that you saw me mount. So then uh, the strap can hold the box down. It's not pretty, but it should do the job fine. I ended up buying a ratcheting strap to secure the box down and actually is really secure now and it's much easier to you know put together than the other strap that came with the box.
that's it for the battery relocation. Uh, I was pretty happy with how that came out. The ratcheting uh, strap was a big bonus that I added to that and I really am happy with how tight it is now. It's very secure. But yeah, I think it's gonna help just balance the car a little bit. Put a little bit of weight in the back. Not a big mod, but I think it's something that's good for track cars. This was my daily, I would not do this because I just think it's unnecessary. You lose trunk space and I think it's dangerous, you know, because a lot of guys will put it in the back corner and that's just, that's just not smart. You're gonna, you're gonna get in an accident and the battery can explode or do something crazy. I don't know, you know, I, I'm not an expert in this, but also with batteries, they release gases. Standard batteries from, from AutoZone like this one is, it release gases from time to time. So if you have the car, you know, enclosed, I think that can be dangerous. So I wouldn't do this if I wasn't gonna be tracking the car. You know, the windows on this thing are gonna be open all the time when I'm driving because there's no AC and I live in Florida and when we run the track days, you have to have the windows down. So I'm not worried about the gases that are gonna come out of the, the battery. It's not a big deal. But for daily driving, if you guys are gonna do that, I really don't think you should unless you go with a high performance battery that doesn't release any gases of any kind, then um, I think you'll be okay. But next up for the car, you know, um, I got some big, big stuff coming for me. I've had this car for over 12 years. Um, I, I put 100,000 miles on this car and now it is my track car. Um, it's seen everything. Before I bought the car, it was in a front end accident. So everything from the fender forward or from the door forward has been replaced and has been painted. And as you can tell, I don't know if you can see it here, but the paint job on the front is a piece of shit. It is like in a, you know, one of those cheaper paint jobs you can get that has the clear already mixed in. Um, the hood is, has peeled on me and all of that. Clear coat's gone. And then on the rest of the car, the, the spots like the roof and the trunk are, you know, clear coat's just awful. So, you know, the car's seen a lot of miles and, but overall, I think the body is actually pretty good. Um, there's not too many dings except right there. <laughs> and you know so i'm getting it painted i'm going to be working with throttle chaos garage i'm going to be prepping the car for paint so sanding and any kind of body repair i'm going to be showing you guys and i'm going to be doing it myself yeah i'm excited to get started and i'm excited to see the finished product i'm going to be taking it over to those guys probably at the end of march to um get the car painted i'm going to be changing the look a little bit um, so it's going to be kind of a transformation for the car and I'm really pumped on, you know, updating, changing the look a little bit. A few pieces that I've been wanting to get and just making the car more race inspired and a little bit prettier to look at. I'm excited about that. So stay tuned to transformation of my EJ, EK, Coupe Civic thingamajig is coming soon. So stay tuned. We've got more videos coming while I prep the car and get it ready for paint. So thanks for watching guys, please subscribe and go visit RHC Performance in our link in our description. You support the people that support us, makes more videos for you to watch. So we really appreciate everything and uh, I'll see you guys next video.